I have wrote down over a dozen ideas for a side series to upload alongside my completionist videos and I couldn't decide on just one to pick. So instead I'm going to play every single one of them for 100 hours. When I'm finished I'm going to shortlist the ones I enjoy playing the most and you can vote on the one that I continue playing. In a way this is a series itself and I was thinking of calling it the side series side series. If you have a better idea I'd love to hear it. Okay, first up is a level 3 Skiller. I've chosen this as the first build to play because I have a lot of history with Skillers. I'll talk about that a little later though, because first let's set some goals. There's three things that come to mind when I think of a good Skiller. Skill Capes, Fashion Scape, and a good total level. The timer is already going and I need to achieve each of these goals before the clock hits 100 hours. Hour 1 and I'm in Lumbridge. There's 12 minutes already lost on the clock because of Tutorial Island, bonding up the account, changing settings and grabbing the iconic training bow. Nowadays you can just turn off attack options, but back in the day that wasn't really a thing. So if you equipped the bow with no ammo, that basically did the same thing. And that's why you'd see every single skiller wearing one. If I accidentally attack something at any point and level up, this entire account is in the bin. Also, the training bow is best in slot fashion scape, so already on track for one of the goals. In the first hour, I'm just thinking of how I can make money whilst I'm doing some of the starter quests in Lumbridge for XP. Sheep Shearer was first up, and whilst I was busy getting wool, I had a light bulb moment about the crafting XP reward I was about to get. I could craft clockworks at someone's house. It only needs level 8 crafting. How much profit, you may ask? I don't know. Um, also, I don't have any money to buy supplies either because this is all from scratch, so that was the first problem to overcome. After the sheep shearer, I made my way over to the Lumbridge Swamp and took the boat to start Mistholin Mystery. Pretty fun quest, apart from this stupid knife mirror puzzle thing, and I am rewarded with some uncut gems, which I'll sell for some starter GP once in Varrock. Speaking of starter GP, I think you know where I'm heading next, but what you may not know is that there is a one-time free teleport to the Stronghold of Security by talking to Count Check in the Lumbridge Graveyard. I grabbed some meat from the Barbarian Hall, then grabbed all of the starter cash, and of course, next piece of the Fashionscape goal, the fancy boots. Already two best in slot Fashionscape items, and I'm not even an hour into the account. From here, I make a run to the Varrock Museum. If you ever plan on making a level 3 skiller, this is perhaps the first thing that you should think of before anything else, because this is going to boost you to 9 Hunter and 9 Slayer. The Hunter level is nice, but the most important thing here is the starter Slayer level. Lamps are essentially one of the only ways to train Slayer on a level 3, so every level is super important plus it's free total levels. I figure if I'm going to be making clockworks I should probably buy a house so that I can use house tab teleports. I sold all of the loot that I had on the GE. Now I didn't have the level to make clockworks yet and I also didn't really have any money to buy the steel bars to make them either. So I thought why not knock out two birds with one stone. I bought gold bars, a bracelet mold, a Falador teleport along with a Varrock teleport to get back to the GE. As soon as I got to Falador I was tempted with some free stuff on the floor and I won't lie I was thinking of picking it up but I felt like it would be cheating so I let it despawn. I crafted the bracelets and got some total levels, made my way back to the GE and sold off the loot. Luckily it was just about enough for a single house tab and an inventory of steel bars. I then broke into someone's house and tested out this money maker. And I was right, it's about 300 GP profit per bar, so I got to work. I used the jewelry box to get back to the GE, and from here I kept selling off the clockworks, kept buying more and more steel bars to keep building up the cash stack and train crafting. I gotta say though, this method is pretty awful with how much you have to click. There's no make all option and you have to go through the chat dialogue each time to make just one. This entire process took me into hour 3. It wasn't all bad though, I've got a cash stack of 360k now, which is real nice. At the start of hour 3 I bought some teleport jewellery and decided to train up my agility level at the gnome course. Now I'm not a big fan of agility but I really do enjoy this course. Normally I'd put XP lamps into this to skip the early levels as it's mega slow, but as I said before, everything has to go into Slayer. Drain all next, and the only interesting thing that happened here was the first collection log slot being the Mark of Grace. I wasn't here for long though, I bought some summer pies to boost up for Alcarid next, and can someone tell me what the hell this is supposed to be? How are four now and I'm in Varrock. Levels are coming in a little bit quicker now and I was acquiring lots of Marks of Grace. 
Now, I don't think I even explained why I chose to do agility next, and the thought process at this point was to get agility up for quests. I'm very limited with what quests I can actually complete, but there are still some that are going to help me skip the early skilling levels. Just before hour 7, I logged out and made a list of items that I thought I'd need for quests. When I logged back in, I went on a shopping spree, and that included some teleports to get around the map quicker. From here, I completed Cux Assistant, then Dorrit's quest for mining, and then once I was in the area, I ran over to Tavali to unlock Herb Lore. It's at this point I want to mention that playing as a level 3 is like playing on a permanent 5 star wanted level because literally everything wants to kill you. With Herb Lore now unlocked, I run over to Goblin Village to hand in some new armor for them. The XP reward from this isn't great, but it was close by and it's some free quest points, and the same could be said for Romeo and Juliet. Then I went over to one of my favorite characters in the game, Thurgo. This guy's great. All he wants in life is to sit by the beach eating pie. I respect that. But then I had the issue of trying to mine the blue right ore. But luckily, I could just log into my main account and take out all of the Ice Warriors. I handed in the sword made by Thurgo, and that takes me straight to 29 smithing. Which is great, but I can do better than that with the Sleeping Giants quest. This unlocks the Giants Foundry, but more importantly, it takes me up to 33 smithing. X marks the spot next, and that's another lamp for Slayer getting me to level 10. I bought a ton of energy potions for Client of Karend because staminas are way too expensive for me right now, and after a ton of running around, there was 14 Slayer. I then started Rune Mysteries, and because it doesn't give any runecrafting XP, I completed Enter the Abyss 2, which puts me at level 9. I planned to do the Temple of the Eye next, but to start that I needed level 10, so crafted a quick inventory of earth runes for that. During the Temple of the Eye quest I got a mining level and some free runecrafting levels, and the big XP drop at the end put me to level 27, and a little over the 9 hour mark now. Next up is one of my favourites, and that's Monk's Friend. One of the best things about playing as a skiller is that the only quests you have to do are the ones that take 5-10 to 10 minutes each. With my new woodcutting level, I decided to take a small break from questing and started chopping and burning down trees. I had the stray dog following me for a little while too, and that reminds me, when are they going to release the Dogs of Gilanor quest? They have some in-game models for Shebas and other breeds ready to go, so where is it? Anyway, I got distracted by a genie and spent that on Slayer, which puts me at level 15 now. Hour 10, and I have to say, with a timer on screen, it really does add pressure. I decided to stop fire making at this point and switch to fletching. It was also around this time that I got to 30 woodcutting, which means I could move over to willow tree soon. At some points in the video, you're gonna see the timer with some text on it saying inaccurate. I didn't realize it at the time of recording, but for some reason, the plugin breaks when you enter instances. It goes back in time and it doesn't seem to fix itself until I log out and back in, so I'll have this fixed for future accounts. Anyway, Forestry was then released. Yeah, that's how old these clips are. <laughs> I've, I've been slowly working on this account for a while. Also, you were probably wondering why I didn't buy logs on the GE to fletch. I was wondering that too, so I bought some and fletched in the clan hall for a bit and got to level 20. Although, during hour 11 I was hearing good things about forestry and how people were getting quite a lot of money and XP from it, so I went out to cut some trees. Halfway through hour 12 and I moved over to the Barbarian Assault Willows where I did a quick maze random for 5k worth of loot. Incredible. I was fletching the logs too and by hour 13 I grabbed 40 fletching and shortly after 50 woodcutting. And then I spent another 3 hours grabbing 56 woodcutting and 50 fletching. Hour 19 and I moved over to the teaks and got myself 45 fire making and then made my way over to the GE to loot the bird nests which sold for 100k. Then I sold off the rest of my fletching supplies for another 100k. At this point I wanted to carry on training fletching for some profit because I'm going to need a lot of money for the buyable skills, the fashionscape and potentially a 99 but I wasn't going to chop all of the logs this time. I bought a few thousand maple logs, went to the clan hall, and got to work, eventually hitting 65 fletching. This resulted in quite a lot of profit, however that didn't last for very long because I bought even more logs and just set them on fire for some quick levels. I was adamant that I wasn't going to go to winter tot and burn all of the logs for fire making, but then I went to winter tot and burned the logs there. Yeah, I got quite bored of regular fire making. Instead of digging up the Clue Hunter outfit like everyone else, I got myself a Santa hat, demon feet, 
gloves and a fire staff. Now the demon feet do look pretty stupid, but I have to admit that the Santa hat is another piece of best in slot fashion scape. I kept opening up the crates for some horrendous loot, but I did get a Bruma torch, which to be fair looks slightly better than the fire staff. And by hour 27, I got to 70 fire making, which I thought was a pretty good place to stop because it's winter top. I then sold off all of the awful loot and got myself 10 cooking for some of the upcoming quests and remembered that I'm poor, like really, really poor. So I ran to Grace, pet her dog and traded in the marks that I had. Then I thought it's probably best that I trade in some of these forestry things for some money because it was being botted into oblivion on launch and everything was rapidly dropping in price. I grabbed the backpack, which is going to be another part of the fashion scape if I'm not able to get myself a skill cape. I figured the secutor attachments would be the best thing to buy and I needed to train up my smithing to make them, so that's what I did. I listed the attachments on the GE and oh my god, I'm a millionaire, except I'm not because forestry was botted into oblivion and they only sold for about 10% of their actual worth. Hour 28 rolled by and I started some more quests. The first one being Daddy's Home, which is kind of like a construction tutorial and it gives you some XP and a starter package. I then handed in the Fruit Blast, which started Recipe for Disaster. Next up was the Sea Slug quest, which is great for some early fishing XP, getting me to level 24. Then on top of that, I did fishing contests for level 26. Now fishing is one of my favorite skills and it's something that I really enjoyed as a skiller back in the day. So I made my way over to Barbarian Village. I figured because there's a permanent fire here, I may as well get my cooking level up too to cook the trout and salmon. Now, as the levels come in, let me tell you about the last time I was here on a skiller. There was no shift drop, I was free to play and using a laptop touchpad. Honestly, it was awful but i got all the way to 99 fishing doing that but that wasn't the only achievement that i got back here in the day see this is where i actually started my level 3 skiller clan back in 2009 and we're still going strong although nowadays we are more of a social pvm clan we do still have some level 3 skillers in the clan including my fiance she has a max level 3 skiller with a few pets and over 30 million hunter xp on that account but she hasn't played that one for a long time because she's now trying to max an Iron Man skiller with only a couple of herb lore levels to go. Tara has been doing herby ball for like an entire year just for the herb drops. It's not like she can get them as PVM drops and getting secondaries is also quite hard. Also teleporting around for herb runs is also not ideal because you can't really get teleport tablets. Also, if you aren't familiar with level three skillers, you may be pointing out the Slayer level at this point, but the majority of the level three skiller community don't really count Slayer as one of the stats for maxing the build. It's more for bonus total levels and high score ranks. Which, you know, shout out to Jagex for releasing the skiller high scores. I really think that was a great addition. They had some other ideas for skiller builds, but honestly, I wasn't a fan of those outside of the skiller max cape. I think that'd still be pretty cool to have in the game. When Old School first released, I was there day one from the very moment the servers opened, but I decided that I'd become a main account this time around instead of a skiller. However, like a year into the account, I decided I'd make a skiller to play on the side instead. But it got to the point where I'd focus more on the skiller and was really enjoying the grinds on there, so slowly stopped playing the original main account. Then, after a couple of years or so, I was over 1500 total and decided at this point I'd rather turn it into a main account and just go for the max keep. At the time when I decided to become a main account, I was hunting black chins and there's two interesting stories here. One of them was that I had a DFS pure who kept sculling up and ragging me and only sometimes getting the PK. One time he failed to kill me and Kemp Q of all people logged in on his old Iron Man 10 HP pure and went to kill the defense pure. I was laughing so hard because the DFS pure kept saying how nobody was going to be able to PK him. Yes, I'm getting him. I'm getting him. I'm getting him. Oh my god. Oh my god, I got him. I got him. He's dead. He's freaking dead. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, oh my lord. Oh my god. Yeah, so in that clip, Kemp is worried that I'm going to snipe all of the loot 
Um, and I mean, I do look like a vulture ready to swoop in, but in reality, I was just wanting to see what the loot was because the kill was so satisfying to me. Though the hobgoblins were destroying me and I didn't have a ton of food left over after being wrecked by the guy, so I was going in for the food at the end. Anyway, the next story, I decided to go rogue. See, in the 1500 total level worlds, level 3 skillers back then didn't have many people who could PK them outside of a couple of defense pures. So when I decided to get combat, I thought I'd make a cheeky bit of money. I got myself 13 mage and decided to fire strike the other level 3 skillers. I know that sounds heartless and part of me kind of regrets doing it. However, I did make close to 50 mil in a couple of days from that, which paid for tacits and a bandos chestplate for Slayer. So yeah. Anyway, that skiller I decided to get combat on is actually my maxed inferno account. I have lots of good memories of being at level 3 and so that's why I wanted to try this build first. After getting level 50 fishing I was close to the 33 hour mark, getting closer and closer to that 100 hour mark. I went thieving next starting in Lumbridge and then went over to the iconic Ardoon cake stall. At one point I thought I'd been caught but it just ended up being two gay dads staring at me from behind. A little later on this freak runs past me and uh yeah. <laughs> When I moved on to Silk, I was being harassed by a knight, so I trapped it in the house behind me. And then he just stood there, standing and staring at me through the window like a weirdo. And next, I tried to steal from a fruit stall in Hesidius, but I was told I didn't have the favor. I pushed a plow for all of about five seconds before I realized, no, I'm not going to do that. I used the certificate from the client of Karend and raided the fruit stores, banking anything remotely valuable and eating the strange fruits to keep the run energy up. I'm not going to comment on every random event collection log I'm getting, but I do like these beekeeper legs. Maybe they'll become a part of the final fashion scape, who knows. What I do know is that by hour 36 I had 50 thieving. I sold the loot on the GE and walked away with a little bit of profit. I figured that I'd complete the Hesidious favor by making fertilizer. It's good for some early farming levels and now that I actually had some GP I can do some herb runs for profit and tree runs for XP. For the herb runs it would be ideal to have a teleport close to the Hesidious patch. I figured if I got my construction level up I could move my house there and use the house tabs. That way I didn't have to sink a ton of time into going for a Xerix talisman through the stone chests. Plus it's even more total levels which is always welcome. I handed in the fertilizer and unlocked the house teleport. I planted some bits just to start getting some XP. My herb of choice is going to be Toad Flex, super cheap seeds and the herbs were selling for a decent amount as well. Whilst I waited for those to grow I went mining and by hour 38 I'd gotten to level 30. The trees started growing and I got another log slot being the Hespori seed. Went back to mining and by hour 41 I was at level 45. I still have to get a skill cape by hour 100 and I'm almost at the halfway point, so I put together a plan. I'd get my cooking up to level 65, and from there I'm able to make money by creating pineapple pizzas, which surprisingly is a somewhat decent money maker when you're a broke boy like me. So yeah, that's what I did. I made a ton of pineapple pizzas, which if you didn't know, is actually a decent food to be fair. It heals 22 HP in one invent slot, but in two bites. Decent for Slayer I'd say. With my profits I dumped most of it into jugs of water and grapes so that I could bank 99 cooking. From here I capped wines and farming for a good dozen hours or so. Making wines is super cheap with grapes at just 9 GP and jugs at 27 GP. I was able to bank the entire 99 with I think about 2.5 mil or so and the XP is insanely fast hitting up to around 500k per hour. Plus you can start doing wines from level 35. Now you will be failing some around that level but it is still super quick and it's a decent option if you aren't a fan of one tick around wines. It was around this time that I figured I'd make wines by sand crabs instead of the clan hall because you're able to get random events at this bank which is ideal for potential genies and exam randoms for slayer levels. By hour 64 I managed to hit 91 cooking, almost halfway to 99. And it was at this point I realized that the goals being completed by the 100 hour mark were starting to look possible again. 
Because of all of the herb runs that I was doing, I made a decent amount of GP that I could dump into some more buyables. And so that's what I did, starting with Herbal Ore, hitting level 38 for prayer potions. Sapphires were also looking like they were just about break even, and I had a decent cash stack now to buy some in bulk. And by hour 65, I'd hit a little over 750 total level, and then 52 crafting. I then sold the gems on the GE and bought my next best in slot fashion skate being the royal top. It's going to match nicely with the Santa hat and the beekeeper legs. Whilst doing herbs I was planting watermelons or sometimes snake grass. I'd recommend doing this if you're a mid-level farmer because it's some nice passive XP. I carried on with the wine grind and I was grabbing a level up every couple of hours. I did slow down on the herb runs around this time a little bit because I was doing some grinds on my completionist account instead and putting more focus into that. And then by hour 84 I had achieved one of my goals being a skill cape. I know it's only cooking but I'm still pretty proud. I went into this without a plan and just winged it so I'm pretty happy with the results. Also the cooking cape, whilst it is one of the easier ones to get, I do genuinely think it's one of the better looking ones and it fits my fashion scape that I have going on too which is quite nice. After knocking out that goal it was time to get the total level up some more. Less than 16 hours left now. I went smithing as it was pretty quick levels and I still had a decent amount of GP from the herb runs. By hour 86 I got to 50 smithing and from here I did a quick bank sale throwing all of my junk onto the GE for some quick GP. Did some more herb runs for some money and decided I'd dump some more money into crafting. Water battle staffs are decent XP but I didn't have the level for them yet so I crafted some more sapphires again to get the level. I did water battle staffs for a little bit but they weren't as AFK as I'd like because I couldn't buy them in bulk. I'd have to keep selling and rebuying a hundred or so at a time so I went back to sapphires and hit level 60 just before hour 88. I then decided I'd go back to smithing. It's pretty quick and at this stage I was wanting to make my levels look a little bit cleaner by trying to get each one to end at a 5 or a 0. I don't know why it just looks better to me. I got a quick farm level in between and by hour 90 I had to hit level 60 smithing. Only 10 hours left and at this point I was deciding which skill to take on next. I saw Hunter was still only at level 9 so in theory that should be some quick total levels. However I haven't done Fossil Island so there are no bird houses which means catching birds which is honestly the most excruciating painful experience known to man. I mean, look at this. I didn't have my mic set up properly at this moment, but I need you to know that I was close to screaming. If you look closely, you can see my mouse actually shaking when I managed to catch one of these stupid things. It was like I'd managed to get a Tebow drop or something. Anyway, after a while I was able to catch butterflies at the same time as the birds, which sped things up dramatically. I decided to stop at level 30 though because I was starting to regret my life choices. Hour 92 and I got some quick herb lore levels for level 45. I bought a ring of the elements because I wanted to test a runecrafting method and that was earth tiaras. See with this ring you can teleport to any of the elemental altars and earth talismans are pretty cheap. So I figured I'd give it a shot and honestly it's not too bad. I blitzed through a ton of levels quite quickly and it was definitely more fun than doing lava runes or something like that. It got me from level 27 runecrafting to 45 within an hour which is, which is pretty decent. Hour 95 and look, I was sort of hoping I'd spoon a pet or something by now and I wanted a follower of some kind so I did Gertrude's cat. Back on my RuneScape 2 skiller I had the purple cat so it brought back a little bit of nostalgia. I still had some work to do on evening out all of the skills that I had left. Woodcutting was at level 59 so I grabbed level 60 really quickly at the Barbarian Outpost. I was 96 through 98 I spent doing agility. It was quite low and I figured I could get to level 45 somewhat quickly. I was still of course doing herb and tree runs too and got a quick level there. But now I only have an hour left on the account so it was time for the final push. I sold off all of the Amalus crystals, the herbs, all of the junk in my bank and dumped the cash stack into some planks. The XP and the levels were flooding in and a little over the 99 hour mark I grabbed 50 construction which was a nice stopping point. All of my levels were looking pretty clean at this point but I still had farming that needed to get to level 70. 
So I teleported to every herb patch, every tree patch, and was clearing them like I was speed running or something. But thankfully, I managed to get to level 70 with 10 minutes still left on the clock. I harvested the remaining Toflex herbs, did one last stump onto the Grand Exchange, and bought the last remaining best in slot fashion skate for the account, being the Strength Amulet trimmed. I used to wear this one back in the day, it's a real nice one, and it's quite cheap. So, with only a couple of minutes left on the clock, I managed to complete all of the goals that I had set out. If I was going to continue this account as my side series, I'd of course max the skiller account and maybe try and go for some high score ranks. But one of the big goals that I'd like to set for the level 3 skiller is trying to go for the omelet pet and metamorphic dust. It's quite hard to do because you can't get many points in a chambers raid, however it is possible. But that is only the first of many 100 hour progress builds. I have some really nice accounts and game modes planned and I'm actually incredibly excited to try some of them out because I've not played them before. If you're new here by the way you should 100% check out my main completionist series. Each video has hundreds of hours of progress distilled into 10 to 25 minutes and the goal of the account is ginormous.